Good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to our Alternativity Service for 2020 today. It's lovely to have you all here, and great that we can be in the building, even if slightly spread apart in our picnic spots. And welcome, too, if you're watching online. Um, great to have you join us in some form, um, and we hope that this, e this afternoon is a real encouragement, as well as a great time of joy for us. Now, is anyone um, excited about tomorrow? Yes, Ricky is on the sound desk. Someone else is here. Yes, quite a few people excited. And I guess you've made lots of preparations. Has anyone got a Christmas tree in their house? Yes, lots of people. Anyone got a turkey in their house? Yes, anyone forgotten to get the turkey? Yes, one person's forgotten to get the turkey. And mince pies, I guess you've got lots of those sort of things as well. Well, it's very exciting, and I hope you're excited as well about remembering what God's done on that very first Christmas all those years ago. And we've got lots of things to help us, and it's lovely that some people have come in a kind of nativity costume. Does anyone want to kind of show off their costume of any age? You could stand up and give us a twizzle. Just give a little twizzle if you've got a costume on. Yep, we've got a nice little share sheep over there in the corner. Brilliant. And just stand up again. Brilliant. That's, um, are you a wise man? The shepherd? A centurion? It's a lovely costume, whatever it is. Brilliant. Well done. Any other? And we've got a little sheep here or an angel sheep. Yes, brilliant. And... Kenny's on the floor, brilliant. It's great to have you, whatever you are. I hope as well that what we're going to do this afternoon will also help us to remember what happened on that very first Christmas. We're going to um, have some songs. We can't sing, but we're going to hum, and there's a lot of actions to do, so you need to be ready for that. And we're also going to have um, a reading from the Bible that helps us understand that first Christmas, and we're going to have some people leading prayers for us as well. Um, but as we begin, I'm going to pray and ask God to help us, um, pray that he would help us understand all that happened and why it means so much for us today as well. So let's um, pause just for a few seconds and then I'll pray and we'll come to our first song. Lord God, we thank you so much for Christmas. You give so many good gifts for us to enjoy and we thank you very much for all that we will enjoy in the coming days. And Lord God, we thank you, thank you, thank you for the greatest gift for Jesus Christ. And as we meet today, please tell us more about him so that we can know him and follow him. Amen. Now, if you can join with the actions, that'll keep you warm and it'll help everyone to understand what's going on. Our first song, I think you will know, so I won't tell you what it is. We're just going to have the musicians lead us. If you'd like to stand up. And we'll do the actions as well. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world. 
that's a bit strange, isn't it? Do have a seat. A bit strange doing the actions without actually singing, but we know what we mean, and we would be humming away. You can hum the next, the next song if you want to do that. Now, if, um, if we believe there's a God who's got the whole world in his hands, then it makes a lot of sense to talk to him and to ask him for help. So when we pray, we're basically saying one of two things to God. We're either saying thank you or we're saying please help. And we're going to have our prayers now and um, we're going to invite up the person who's kindly going to help us with our prayers and they're going to lead us as we pray. We will be praying today using a teaspoon by using the letters T, S and P. Let's pray. T is for thank you. We thank you, God, that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, down to earth. Thank you that we can share the good news of Jesus' birth with our friends and family this Christmas. Thank you we can be here today despite the challenges of this year. Amen. S is for sorry. Dear God, we are sorry for when we sin by saying, shove off God, I'm in charge, no to your rules. We are sorry for when we don't always remember the true meaning of Christmas. And we focus on the present, presents and dinners instead of your son. Amen. P is for please. Please, Lord Jesus, we pray that our friends and family will hear about your son's birth, the true meaning of Christmas. We also pray for all those who are alone this Christmas, at home or in hospitals. We pray that you will comfort them and show them Jesus Christ and remember that he will be with them. And we pray for them to know that there will be an end to all their suffering in heaven. Amen. Now, it's a party, isn't it, Christmas? Because Christmas is Jesus' birthday. And when it's somebody's birthday, you have to play games to celebrate. So we're going to play a game to celebrate in just a minute. But for now, can you hold up if you've made a special Christmas scene out of paper? Fantastic. We've got a Christmas tree. Top work with the Christmas tree. Any other Christmas pictures with your paper? We've got a manger, fantastic. Is that a whole scene over there? A stable, fantastic. Fantastic, excellent work. That was just an inter introductory game if you were here in the building. But everybody, whether you're here or at home, can you stand up on your feet because we're going to play a party game. And I haven't given you the things to make with this time because God has already given you bodies. And in your bubbles, I want you to make some things that are to do with Christmas. So the first thing I want you to do with each other in your bubbles is make a Christmas tree. Go for it. Make a Christmas tree. Oh, there's some good work going on here. Join in at home too. Star. You could make a few stars. We've got a flashing star over there. Well done. Okay, the next one. Can you make a reindeer sleigh? Very good. Excellent work. Be careful with each other. Okay, next one. Can you make Christmas dinner? Lots and lots of eating going on. Excellent. And last one. Can you make the true Bible story, the nativity scene? Can you do that?
Excellent. Well done, everybody. And now we are going to sing another song. Sorry about that, Ricky. There we go. We're going to um, sing another song now, but well, we're going to listen to a song and do the actions to the song. It's a song that helps us understand what was going on on that first nativity scene. And it's got actions all the way through, which I think help us as well. You may know it. Um, it's from a verse in the Bible, which I think is the most famous verse in the whole of the Bible. Um, and I'm going to show you the actions before we sing it. So the words are, for God so loved the world, and if you'd like to do the actions with me, just to practice. For God, point to God up in heaven, ruling the world, so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever, doesn't matter who you are, whoever believes in him shall not die but have eternal life. Brilliant news, eternal life, the best life that you can possibly have. And then you get um, a chorus, of, a separate verse rather, and you spell out the word life, L-I-F-E, and there's an action for each thing. So what you do is you make the letter with your body. So L is for the love that he has for me, and you can imagine what's coming next. I am the reason he died on the tree. F, slightly tricky. F is like this, depends how you do your Fs really, but you can have a top one that's a bit longer or the same size. F is the forgiveness, which you, can, you, you get as you trust Jesus. And E, different ways of doing the E. Some people go for the sort of hardcore E. Others, if you're slightly older, you just go for the E like that. And that's slightly easier if you're of a certain age. Why don't you stand up and we're going to stay, sing it quite slowly. We'll have it played quite slowly so we can take in the words as we do the actions. Great. have a seat. Some very good letters being made there. It's a great, great little song because it's from a great verse and you could look it up in the Bible uh, on your own if you wanted to. Now we're going to read a bit from the Bible, not that bit, from another bit um, and those reading are going to come up to the front now and um, we can listen to one of the accounts of what happened on that very first Christmas. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. That's on page 965 of the Church Bibles. That's Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man, and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her 
from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child, and, they will, and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for reading that. And welcome to our alternativity. And this is alternative, isn't it? It's different. This whole year has been different, and Christmas is different this year. Because coronavirus has brought us some things for Christmas this year. Hand sanitizer. Disinfectant. Key workers. Let's put some key workers up there. There's some more key workers here. Lots and lots of key workers for Christmas this year. Uh, government guidelines on self-isolation and shielding and who we can see and bubbles and where we can see them. Face masks. Only one day of Christmas this year, not 12. Track and trace. Oh, a vaccine. There's a vaccine. Seeing our friends and family on Zoom for Christmas instead of being able to be with them and hug them. But no singing for Christmas this year. You see, Christmas is very different. Christmas is very different. And for some of us, that probably makes us feel very sad. It's probably the Christmas that we hadn't planned and the Christmas that we wish hadn't happened. To many of us, Christmas is just a mess in wrapping paper and ribbons. It's just a mess. And that is exactly what that first Christmas would have been like for Joseph, who we heard about in our Bible reading. There's Joseph. It would have felt a complete mess to him. He was engaged to be married to Mary, and they were going to have a great celebration. The food had been bought, the drinks had been ordered, there were presents, there were decorations, he got his smart clothes ready to wear. It was going to be a party with balloons. It was going to be a party. But then we read, didn't we, in verse 18, there it is on the screen, before they came together, she was found to be with child. We are told that it's through the Holy Spirit that this child came along. But Joseph doesn't know that yet. All Joseph knew was that Mary had a baby in her tummy and he wasn't the dad. So he decided to divorce her quietly. The party was off. The presents would have to go back. It was all a mess. For Joseph, that first Christmas was a complete mess. It wasn't at all how he planned it, and it wasn't at all how he wanted it. And he would have been so, so upset. But, and it's a huge but, in the middle of that mess, and in the middle of Christmas 2020, there's a plan that is not affected by coronavirus. It's a plan that is great news for absolutely everyone, because it's God's plan. And it's right there in verse 23, back up on the screen. It's God's plan. And it's a plan that he told us about many years before through the prophet Isaiah. It's a baby coming into the mess. Listen as I read verse 23. 
the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now, all babies are special, aren't they? All babies are special and all babies change their parents' lives forever. But this baby was completely different. He was so different. He was so, 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 so special. Because this baby changes everything for everyone because this baby's name is Jesus and he is God with us. He's God with us. He's God with us. And that is mega. It sounds simple, doesn't it? But God with us is crammed full of meaning. It's as crammed full of, me of meaning as I want to be crammed full of food after I've eaten my Christmas dinner tomorrow. There's so much in there. God with us is mega news. You see, from the, before the world began, Jesus has always been God. And he chose to be born as a real human baby to be with us. If you or I had been there that first Christmas, we could have held God in our arms. The person who made the world had stepped into the world. We sang, didn't we? He's got the whole world in his hands. Well, that's talking about God. And God came into the world so we could have held him in our hands. He chose to wrap himself up as a baby and come close. God came down to be with us. Now you've heard of the 12 days of Christmas song? Well, on the first day of Christmas, God came to us. Now very quickly, in your bubbles, I'm going to give you some things I want you to chat about very quickly. And I want you to think, who would you choose to be with you on a bike ride? Couple of seconds. Who would you choose to be with you on a bike ride? Who would you choose to be with you on the beach? Who would you choose to be with you doing your work? Who would you choose to be with you in a cafe? Okay, well done. Well, I wonder, would you have chosen your mum or dad to be with you on a bike ride? Or maybe you would have chosen your brother or sister to be with you on a beach. Or maybe you would have chosen your teacher or your parents to be helping you with your homework, to be with you doing your work. And maybe you'd choose your mates to be with you in a cafe. Well, Jesus came for us. He came to give us something far better than a visit with our most favourite family or friends. Something far, far better. You see, on the G day Jesus was born... Jesus came to be God himself with us. He came to make his home with us. He came to stay with us. And that is far better than any other friend because God is the best friend we could ever have. And did you know that Jesus knows what it's like to live in this world? Jesus was born as a baby and he knows what it's like to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and an adult. God knows what it's like to have fun. God knows what it's like to work hard. He knows what it's like to feel sad. He knows what it's like to fall over. He knows what it's like to be disappointed. Jesus even knows what it's like to be socially distanced from the one he loves most. 
So why did he bother to come into this world and be God with us? Well, the answer is in verse 21. Verse 21 tells us why he bothered to be God with us. Look at verse 21. It's the words the angel spoke to Joseph. It says, She will give birth to a son, and you will give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now, I'm guessing that sin isn't, pro- isn't something we think about very much. But the fact that God chose to leave heaven, leave heaven and a broken world, and to come into a broken world, means that sin must be a really big problem. Now, all year, we've been looking out for symptoms, haven't we? We've been getting our thermometers, and we've been checking for the symptoms of a high temperature. We've been checking for symptoms of a new and persistent cough. We've been checking for the symptom of a loss of taste and smell. And those symptoms are signs that we've got a problem on the inside, the coronavirus. Now, in a similar way, what we say, how we feel, and what we do, they are symptoms of a bigger problem going on inside us. You see, when I'm impatient and I stamp my foot and when I tell lies or I talk about other people, when I disobey my parents, when I cheat at games or I snatch things that aren't mine, they are all signs of a bigger problem, the sin inside of me. They're signs that I don't love God as I should because we want God, we don't want God to be in charge of us. Our sin is saying no to God, and it means we can't be with God. Now, last Christmas, nobody had heard of social distancing, and you're not telling the truth if you say you did. Last Christmas, we hadn't heard of social distancing. And social distancing is treating your friends as if they're not your friends. And the Bible tells us that that's what we've done to God. The Bible tells us that there's a big divide between and God. Because we have all treated God in a less than friendly way. Our sin causes that divide, and it means we can't be with God. And our sin is such a big problem that God himself chose to come into the world to be God with us to deal with it. You see... That baby, Jesus, God with us, didn't stay a baby. He grew up to be a man. And when he was 33 years old, he went to die on a cross. And on the cross, he suffered that forever separation from God that our sins deserve. And he did that to close the gap between us and God. Jesus chose to die on a cross in our place, taking our sin and the punishment we deserve, and he did that so that anyone who trusts in him, as we sang, can be with God. We can be with God now. We can be friends with God. We can be his forgiven family. We can enjoy life with him now. But not just for now, not just for a short time, we can enjoy life with God forever. God himself came to offer us the vaccine that we need more than any other. And it's a vaccine that if we accept it, we can know God as our Father, we can live with him as our friends, and we can be with him, not distant from him, we can be with him forever. And that's open to anyone who trusts that Jesus did this for them. Now, if that's new news to you, if that's something you haven't heard before, then please do chat with me afterwards on the way out. I'd love to tell you more. Or chat with a Christian that you know. They would love to share more about Jesus with you. Or come back to this building on, from the 3rd of January. There'll be chairs here then. Come back to this building and you can hear lots more about Jesus, God with us. Now, 
this Christmas is not the Christmas we would have planned. It's not the year we would have planned. But God knows all about it. Jesus is God with us. And for those who are trusting Jesus, let's celebrate that. Let's remember that. God is with us right now, today. He's with us tomorrow, even when our friends and family can't be with us. God is with us today when we open our presents. Christians can have hope. Christians can have joy. We are the ones who serve these Christmas gifts because God is with us. He's come into our mess. He's come for those whose plans have been wrecked. He's come for those who feel disappointed and stressed out and tired by it all. This is the good news that we all need to hear. This is the good news that we need to share. God has come to us. Jesus is God with us. We've got just one more song before we finish, and it's a reminder again of how God with us actually happened. Has anyone here ever been to something called Pebbles at this church? One or two people have been to a Pebbles, and you may know this song called On That Very First Christmas, and there are some actions. Tom's going to help me because I don't know all of them, but let's stand, and this helps us to remember all that happened to make God with us. Joseph go to Bethlehem, Bethlehem, Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph go to Bethlehem on that very first Christmas. Baby Jesus born that night, born that night, born that night. Baby Jesus born that night on that very first Christmas. The wise men come to worship him. Worship him, worship him. The wise men come to worship him on that very first Christmas. The shepherds told that the king is born, the king is born, the king is born. The shepherds told that the king is born on that very first Christmas. The angels singing glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. The angels singing glory to God on that very first Christmas. Mary and Joseph go to Bethlehem, baby Jesus born that night. The wise men come to worship him, the shepherds told that the king is born. The angels singing glory to God on that very first Christmas. Brilliant. Well done. Well done. Do have a seat on your picnic rugs and car rugs. If you're over the age of 18, well done. I hope your knees and legs are all right after sitting on the hard floor. Now, as we um, leave, um, we're going to be going out of a door different to the one we came in. We're going out in that corner of the building, and those who showed you to your patch, they'll tell you when you can leave as you gather up your belongings. And just to say again, um, there will be lots of chairs in here, even tomorrow morning. And although you're meant to book online, please do that if you can. But there is still space, both for tomorrow's half past nine or 11 o'clock family celebration of Christmas. And then from the 3rd of January as well, we'll be back in the building every Sunday, as long as restrictions allow, which they do at the moment. So we'd love to see you again. And you would be very, very welcome to join us to hear more. Um, I'm going to pray uh, and thank God for our time and then you'll be directed out um, by one of the welcome team. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you again that you came down to the earth to be God with us. We thank you that as Jesus came, he came to save us from our sins. And we pray where this is news to us, You'd help us to understand it more. And where we know it well, may we know to love it more and speak it more. For your name's sake. 
Amen. Look forward to seeing you again sometime and have a very happy Christmas. <laughs>